Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Super Duper Duplicate Challenge here in Oxygen Not Included. I've got a double whammy for you guys today. We're going to be doing both an experiment and a progressing the Super Duper Duplicate Challenge maze of madness that is going on here. And you can see just how mad it is. In the last episode here, we dug up a little bit more. We got some instructions for people to do some stuff right there. We also dug up some more Wii Sports, trying to get the sleep weed farm down to temperature. There's been some tips that you guys have given me to try to get that temperature down. I'll be trying a couple of those but I will be doing an experiment today. And it's one of the classic experiments that I've done previously on several episodes, and that is a hydrogen bubbler system, also known as a, just a system that's going to cool oxygen to the point of liquefaction so that I can purify polluted oxygen and get clean, nice clean oxygen out of it that I could then use to fill up my base because one of the things that I still have a problem with is an insufficient, in, insufficient, <laughs> insignificant oxygen generation. Um, you can see right there, I've, I make 1,800 or so kilograms of oxygen a day, but I still need 2,200 kilograms of oxygen, which is a lot. So the one thing that's going to be different about this oxygen bubble system right here is that it's going to be using kind of a separation system so normally i would i would take the cold hydrogen and i would flow it through a bunch of pipes there's been a lot of looking into that and for some reasons the pipes don't really necessarily uh transfer as much energy as well, you know, what, what else we could do right here? So one of the things is wire bridges, and we can make wire bridge out of wolframite. And wolframite, we tapped into a nice source of wolframite way over here. You know, we can get some out of there. So that will be really useful. So I'll be able to build that up and wherever it is, right over here. And that should transfer a lot of the heat energy from the hydrogen, which will be really cold over here, going through all these thermoregulators, getting nice and cold. Transfer that heat energy, so hot will go over to cold, and then it'll be deleted over here. And then I will use a little bit of a liquid trap to boil off the liquid oxygen at that point to nice clean oxygen, which I could then pump into my base, hopefully not in a super cold state. We'll have to figure out if I got to do it there or if I'm just going to pump it down here and then kind of figure out what else I'm going to do with it. The idea, though, is to get that up and running here by the end of the episode. And I don't know if it'll be as easy as I think it will, but we'll see. I don't have a ton of room over here, so I, this is all I got. So that's what I got going on here. The other big update is that the Oxygen Not Included, they've been working on the game, developing it, and in a live stream they announced here whoop, that on the 24th, right down here, you can see, uh, of this month, the Outbreak Upgrade will be releasing. So that's going to be the next big update for this game, and that will introduce uh, a new building, which is the thing where you can kind of like wash your hands and whatnot. Uh, it'll also introduce like some other things into the map as far as little treasures that you can find that will apply some sort of bonuses or effects into your base or you know they have their own treasures but the big thing is that it introduces disease to your base so things like the bathrooms and stuff like that or the outhouses will be diseased and that can spread around and make your people sick so that also makes things like the rejuvenator and stuff like that a lot more you know prevalent i guess so they're going to be introducing that, and that'll be interesting to see how that all works. You'll have to kind of strategize for that, adding a little bit more complexity to the game. But I think they're also simplifying some other things as far as how you look stuff up and look through the menus and all that good stuff. So I'm looking forward to that. But before that game is out, we got to take the Super Dupl Duplicate Challenge to its maximum level. So that means I got to tap into all of these little morbs down here. And I just got to hopefully get this base to the point where I can bring in another 50 duplicates. So... I gotta rush through it. I gotta make this all happen. Hopefully it will work out well. Okay, so one of the big topics of the last video was this sleet wheat farm and trying to get it cold enough or trying to get the sort of so it isn't so stiff and so that it's growing quite well. One of the things that I was having a problem with is that the very low amount of carbon dioxide is in this space. That's one of the problems. The other problem is the actual temperature itself. So one of the recommendations here was to actually spread out these sleet wheat planter boxes a little bit so that there's, they're not right next to each other. So kind of like in this image right here, you can see how that's all spread out. So Nick was, was kind of talking about their niche. I'm not sure how to say your name right there, but that was kind of talking about. The other thing though is I could run some other gases in there that have a little bit higher, you know, specific heat capacity. And that way, hopefully the wheeze warts would work a little bit better. So I could also do that. I do have a couple of things over here that could be introduced into this space. Oh, and speaking of which, in the next update, chlorine is going to have a lot more use because of its sanit 
it's sanitizing effects, so we'll also be able to get a good use out of chlorine besides using it to kind of make steam, which is kind of a weird thing that we were doing, but it is something that we were doing. So I think chlorine would actually be a good thing to pipe in here. I mean, just for the sake of it, all right? This would also be a good thing to get up and running. Come on now, build it up. I need more oxygen down in this space. Oh, so many things to do. You know what? I got enough duplicates. Let's try to do this real quick. I'm going to put a gas pump over here. Maybe I'll put it way down here. I'm going to have to dig in from somewhere. So, and... Okay, so currently the flow is right over here. So if I take that and I just kind of plug it in, and then I deconstruct this little piece, that should allow me to run this gas pump and pump a lot of this chlorine into this space, which is a little bit of a risk, but you know what? I think it's worth it, so that's what I'm going to do. We'll see if this is a bad decision. I've been away from this game and kind of away from the YouTube thing here for about a uh, little over a week now. You know, I was just getting real stressed at work and the amount of time and everything was just collapsing in on me. So I had to take a little bit of a break right there. So I was on my own kind of massage table type deal just to kind of take some of that stress away. All right, so I should have some power over here that I could just tap right into. Whoop. All right, so here we go. A lot of instruction to dig and build stuff. We'll see what happens there. I'm not gonna make it super high priority. I want this over here to be built and I want it to be successful. I also don't want to let my morbs, ex morbs ex escape before I'm ready, so I've got to make that work. One of the questions I got here is, how am I going to cool down this thermoregulator in the first stage? I think I should liquid cool it, but I'm not sure where to kind of bring that liquid and how to get rid of it. Hmm. All right, so just to see what happens here, I'm going to go ahead and deconstruct every other planter box on this row, just to see how that affects the temperature of everything around it see if that has a major effect okay so both of these plants right here and here they're all suffering from toasty surroundings so let's go ahead and see how this changes if there is any difference between these two plants now that I've gotten rid of every other plant down here now one of the systems I thought about running this entire thing off of was just a slime generator down here sort of a slime processing plant we kind of looked into that and there's a ton of power in, in polluted water and so a slime processing plant is a really powerful thing. However, I still have a ton of extra power down here that I can use, so I'm not worried about it too much. I just don't want this chlorine getting out of here. So come on guys, build it up, make it happen. Sorry, that was not connected at all. Like I said, I have a lot of extra power that's, you know, th that's in this power plant right now, so I don't really need that. And I got enough stuff going on to keep a, you know, keep my attention occupied on several things. So that is why I'm not building that plant this episode. I mean, look at all the work that's going on here. Look at this. That's what I'm, yeah. Uh, Nicola, you're going to get stuck. Well, uh, one of the other challenge ideas that have it's kind of popped up here is the idea to have several different bases that you're managing at the same time. So you try to start duplicates off with like a little mini base on each corner and try to see if you can build them, you know, or get them to survive long enough to get to each other. I like that idea. Uh, True Hippie was actually talking about it, but there's several other people that have kind of mentioned the same sort of thing. And I like that idea. The other idea I kind of like for a challenge, I mean, there's just loads of these uh, uh, challenge ideas, but the other one is kind of like a nomad tribe or something like that. I don't know, whatever it is. The, the one where people don't live in any one spot forever sort of deal. So you're always moving around. You don't have one base. You always kind of move that base around and never come back to it. So you're, you're constantly migrating throughout the entire map trying to dig up all the resources. I think that's an interesting idea. I'm not sure how in the world that would happen, but I like the challenges. All right, Nicola. Come on, man. You got to get out of here. All right, we're gonna have to break down a wall, let him out. Otherwise, he's, he's gonna die of starvation and he's also gonna pee on everything. I don't want him to pee on everything. Oh, now he just gets on the ladder and runs away. Okay. Oh, come on, man, making a mess. You peed on Harold too. Poor guy. Now everybody's gonna mop it up. I mean, not only did he get peed on, the guy's already infected with spores. Okay, so this gas pump down here is up and running. Let's see how this all works out. So it just started to happen, okay. Cool, 
So chlorine is now going to be pumped into my sleet wheat farm because clearly that would be a good idea. But <laughs> this should add some decent amount of mass and it also has some decent thermal properties. Actually, you know what? Its thermal conductivity is crap. So that may be a really good idea. This may be a horrible idea. We're about to find out. I think I might flip the switch off here quick. <laughs> I thought chlorine there had a better... Uh, I don't know what I was thinking. I guess I've been away for a little bit too long. Uh-oh. This might be bad. Can't really stop it now. I mean, if nothing else, it's gonna push the gas pressure up. Because it's got a lot of mass. I've got this, like, bubbling water today. Apparently it's buried flavor. It's got zero calories. You know what that means? That means there's just nothing good in there. It's worthless. And it doesn't taste good. Here's a strange concoction. <laughs> Bam! Bam! Oh man. I took some like sparkling water, which was not particularly good. And then I mixed it with some like crystal light lemonade stuff. Except for like strawberry flavored. Woo! That was an experience. I don't know if it was not really good though. <laughs> if the goal was to wake me up, that did it. All right. All right, as far as the temperature of things, uh, this second row is starting to become nice and cool now. The carbon dioxide is actually, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Carbon dioxide is heavier than chlorine. Except for now this door just opens and a bunch of chlorine pours out. I mean, you can't have everything working right, so I'll tell you what, I'll try to vent this stuff out here a little bit lower. Let's see what happens. I, I don't know what I was thinking down here. This really isn't a good idea. Just leave the chlorine alone rather than like pour it all over your base. Yeah, not a really good idea. All right, who's super stressed out here? Super mate, where are you at? Oh, you know why? It's because nobody ever told this guy he can take a break. I know the feeling, dude. I know the feeling. There you go. Head on over here to the massage table. Take a break. I got your brother. Super Meep just about went Rambo on our whole base. That would have been terrible. All right, so even though the instructions are not clear at all, I'm going to deconstruct this. The liquid will come up and over here and then go down and that'll be the liquid lock, right? So right here will be the liquid lock. It'll kind of drip down and this will be the area where it's going to boil off. I need to make sure that it can drop over. Everybody get back to work. You're not done yet. How puffed you got free. That's, that's not good. All right, we gotta trap this guy in here. We don't want him to get out and just roam all over the place. He's critical to my operation. Man, that drink patch. Okay, so another comment that you guys were leaving here, and I like this topic. Uh, Bowler Hatter was talking about it. Everybody else was kind of chiming in on this one. A lot of conversation about it. Uh, do duplicates attack or murder each other? No, they do not. Not directly currently, but I like the idea that you could have like a horrible duplicate that their, their alternative is to attack each other sort of thing. If they get to 100% stress, they'll just start taking it out on somebody and then they kind of have to run away or something like that. So you could end up with like a mass murderer or something like that. Now, I don't know if that would match their kind of E rating, but <laughs> I think that'd be a like a, a fun trait to accidentally have or something like that. This, this whole plan here is turning into true madness. Like, uh, not sure what's going on. Oh, Harold, come on, man. Now you're entombed? <sighs> and he did it to himself, too. I was watching him do it. All right. Let's see if we can help him out. Somebody deconstruct Harold's head so he can be free. Marie's like, I ain't, I ain't touching him. Dude's helpless. Sorry, Harold. And nobody cares around here. I think Max might care, though. There we go. Nope, he's going to bed. <laughs> Sorry, Harold, you're gonna be there for a while. Now I'm puffed. Don't go over here. This is gonna be the worst place ever. Oh, I see you. You're trying to die. 
You know, considering this guy is entombed, his stress level is only 4%. Alright, so I'm making him some adjustments to how I get into the Sleet Wheat Farm. I'm gonna put the door right up at the top. And then they'll get right onto the ladder to come on down. I think that might work a little bit better. Alright, so I'm working on the power system here. Trying to get everything all wired up just right. Make sure I'm not blowing up any wires. So what I'm doing is I'm going to, going to bring in power to these three thermoregulators over here. That'll happen on one circuit, the same circuit that's powering all of that, so it's coming from its own power transformer. We'll also run this pump over here, but that'll be hooked up to a thermal switch so I can control the temperature of the hydrogen that's running through here. I wanna make sure I have that down. So I'll kind of put, uh, hopefully, a Wolframite thermo switch inside of here. If I take a look at the Sleet Wheat Farm, not a lot here has happened. Uh, some of the things have gotten a little bit colder, but not a big deal so far. I think the one thing that has happened, though, is I've increased the amount of carbon dioxide in this area quite a bit. It's now up to 500 grams or so. It's a little bit thicker up at the top, so I'm going to stop pumping in carbon dioxide at this point and just kind of let it be. All right, you know what would be a good idea? Uh, there was some talk about these wheeze wards being really effective with hydrogen around them. So if I took some of these wheeze wards and then I had a little pocket where I could put some hydrogen that may kind of allow that to cool more to the gas and that gas might be able to transfer a little bit more of that cold energy uh, to the carbon dioxide rather than just letting it pump around. I don't know, that's an idea. As far as my oxygen situation goes, the center of this base is working really good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and disable a couple of these algae deoxidizers just to kind of hopefully let the, you know, the electrolyzers here do a little bit more work. We'll see how that works, you know. I don't think all this oxygen in here will just disappear like that, so I'll kind of just monitor it a little bit. So one of the other things I need to do here, which, uh, again, I didn't really think about, is I need to be able to exhaust the gas in here before I go ahead and replace it with hydrogen. So I'm going to need to be able to vent that over here. What better place to move polluted oxygen than to my little puffed friend, who will hopefully move out of this area when it comes time to move. Oh, man, are you going to fill this with slime? You are. What a punk. You're pooping up in my hydrogen bubbler system. Oh, okay, you heard me. You got out. Thank you. No, where are you going now, Puffed? Oh, come on. This Puffed man. He's on a trip. I don't know where he's going to end up next. He's probably going to end up all the way over here. Maybe way up in this area. Who knows? All right, so now that it's been a little bit here, it looks like the oxygen inside the main base here is still doing quite well. I see the electrolyzers running quite a bit more, so that's good. The oxygen levels, they have started to go down a little bit. It was up near 14, 1600 or so. It's now down around 1000. I have no idea where all that chlorine went that I pumped into here. I'm gonna pump some more and see what happens. I'm just kinda curious where it went. It like, it, it didn't fall out over here or over there. It just kinda disappeared. Okay, so to cool these thermal regulators down, Here's what I'm going to do. I have this nice body of water over here, relatively untouched. So I think I'm going to go ahead and just pump the liquid from here down on top of these thermal regulators, and then I'll kind of pump that liquid out back into that basin over there. So I will increase the temperature there, but that's a lot of water. I'll use a liquid valve to make sure that I'm not really pumping a lot. I don't need to, I don't really need a lot to make this work. So, whoo, look at all this. Okay. <laughs> so now I just want to make sure I have a little bit of a return pump and I'll have to make sure I turn this off once I get close to the hydrogen being cold enough to do what it needs to do so it'll just be a little bit of a balancing act the flood here it goes oh Travaldo the undertaker is going to get flooded by polluted water watch this this is going to be great Oh, and Harold, why not? Let's just run into this place. This is going to be a great idea. I don't know why everybody's idea was to come down here at this moment. <laughs> oh. 
Oh, now he now he realized what's going on. He's getting out of here. Oh my gosh, look at this. <laughs> that's a flood. I guess that's what you get. Justice is slightly served. I think we have a little something extra in store for you. But for now, that's not bad. Okay, so adding chlorine inside of this sleet wheat farm was not the best idea I've ever had. I basically made a lot of mistakes there, but the temperature right now we're seeing as far as these planter boxes have gone, now that the cycles have continued to go through, it's starting to work and work well. I mean, look at this, it's all, it's cooling off. So that's good. A Little bit of extra gas pressure I think made a big difference there. I doubt the chlorine really played much into that at all, except for maybe increasing the gas pressure a little bit more, but honestly, I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't think that was the right play. Okay, so now that this is sealed off, I can begin the first thing that I need to do, and that's to take this uh, op area here, this polluted oxygen, and just pump it out. Aha! I got the puffed back into the spot where it needs to be. All right, let's make sure we can close them in here. Come on, don't let them out. I had to leave this door open for a long time for them to go through. No! No! Oh, come on! That ain't fair. Look at him. He just snuck through right while I'm building it. Come on. Where are you going to go? Where are you going to go? Move! Move! Move out of there! Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I've seen this before. Oh, he got through. <laughs> oh, man. That was close. The amount of randomness that had to happen to make that such a close call. That's impressive. Okay, so this time, I'll make sure, you know, we don't let them out easy. The puffed is technically two tiles tall, so he can't go through a gap that's only one tile, so I can, I can work it like this so that duplicates can get in here, but the puffed can't get out. Oh, that's where all the liquid... Oh, I forgot about this stuff. Woo, turn it down. I was wondering why there's so much water all over my base. Because I'm pumping it into my base. In the new update, they'll actually preserve the, the water here. So you have water bottles, and you'll actually be able to empty the water bottles. So, like right now, I'm just deleting a bunch of water, but in the future, that won't be the case. I guess there's some optimization as far as how the actual base itself runs and calculates all that fun stuff. So, that will be welcome in my case here because, you know, I'm, I'm getting like 13 frames per second, even though I'm recording at 60. I said I was going to record at 30, but, well, it just didn't work that way. Okay, so this system here seems to be working out pretty good. Got some polluted oxygen here. The slime drops down, and we can kind of go ahead and pick it up right there. See? Aha! That works out good. Okay, so another thing that I have going on up here is the location of the hydrogen that I'm going to pump out. So I'll take this hydrogen, and I'll pump it down here and into this area. Because that will be nice. So rather than try to tap this stuff, which I can also, you know, pull some of... The hydrogen off of this system and then just use a manual generator to run it for a little while I can also do that just as long as I max this out as far as you know two kilograms inside of here oh my these things jump all over the place oh and I can't click on anything through them all right deconstruct the ladder It's, several of them are entombed and they're making polluted oxygen constantly. Hey, I guess that isn't a bad thing. I'll take what I can get. Now, <laughs> what I'm trying to do and kind of failing at doing is uh, I'm trying to get this to a point where I can have these morbs down in this area here and then not let them get up into this cold area so I'm trying to separate the two a little bit 
That way polluted oxygen can flow in without killing the morbs. I just don't know how to build these tiles without all of these morbs jumping all over them. Oh, wait, yeah, I do. I can kind of deconstruct them and work backwards, but whatever. All right, so I finally reached the point here where I can start cooling down my hydrogen. So I'm gonna bring down that temperature nice and low, and we'll finally start to cool some of this polluted oxygen. This'll be good, I'm looking forward to this. What? Who died? Bubbles? How in the world did you end up there? Bubble! Joshua, you're dead too? Me? Sorry, me. It's been nice knowing you. Well, do we got enough room in the tasteful memorials here? One. Oh, we got just enough space. Yeah, that worked out pretty good. Actually, rather than bury them, can I move their bodies into here somehow? Ah, maybe. All right, so here's what I, I have to do. I'm gonna build a little tasteful memorial, and then when I see them enter this place, I'm going to then give them a different instruction to go move or run or whatever. And then the next instruction will be to destroy the tasteful memorial. Therefore, even though, you know, poor Bubbles, Joshua, and Meep died, you know, suffocating to death, we will, in turn, get oxygen from them because they'll turn into morbs, and so... The cycle of life will continue and more of us will be able to breathe. I like that plan. That's a good plan right there. I mean, is it a little messed up and a little twisted? I mean, like, yeah. But I think it's a pretty good plan. Oh, you know what? I think I can solve two problems all at the same time. I'll just let the gas come in here. Whoop. That way the morbs stay down there and it could just kind of vent up and through. Look at that. A couple of dead duplicates. I mean, you guys made all the difference. Now all the ideas are popping. All right, so a couple of things I'm doing to, to prep this system here is I have a lot of this hydrogen over here that's getting cold. However, it's also cooling the oxygen on this side because of the Wolframite wire bridges transferring that heat energy in between. So I want to make sure that I'm isolating off this chamber right here. So I'm just going to completely close it off so it's all enclosed in insulated abyssalite tiles. Uh, same thing down here, so I'm closing it off as well. So I should build up some liquid oxygen at the bottom at some point here, and then I can release this tile here to bring that out there and to start kind of um, boiling that off into oxygen. The thing I want to make sure I do, though, before that, before I unleash that, is I'll go in here and I'll kind of mop up some of this water and get rid of the pump and stuff like that because that won't need be necessary anymore. Because at that point, the cold that's being produced there should really keep that thermoregulator relatively cold. However, the energy in and energy out sort of thing might still be a factor, but we'll just have to see. Okay, guys, here's something I'm going to do. Each one of these ladders is 100 kilograms of granite, and I think that's just kind of making this really hard to bring the temperature down to begin with. So I'm going to go ahead and deconstruct this and then go in here and deconstruct the ladder piece by piece. I think that's what I have to do in order to make this system cool down to begin with. Because right now it's just gonna, it's gonna take forever. Alright guys, well I've been at this for about three hours now and I'm simply out of time. The hydrogen bubbler system here, even though it's kind of weird looking, is up and running as far as cooling down. It's not converting any sort of oxygen at the moment, but we'll have to see here. It's gonna take several tiles for it to cool down enough to get up and running, so... We'll just have to wait and see how that all turns out. It's simply not going to happen because I have to play this game in real time. I can't just fast forward like I can in the experiments. So we'll have to see what happens there. But at any rate, thank you guys so much for all of your support recently. It's been absolutely awesome. Even when I was gone for a week, you continued to support the channel a whole lot. So thank you guys so much for all of that. If I've earned your subscription, then thank you again for that. Have a great day, guys. Stay awesome. Peace. Brothgar out.